Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we have some big filming updates for Ahsoka, Andor and more. As always my dear friends, before we dive into the news, please may I ask you to hit that big red subscribe button if you've not done so already and also be sure to give that bell a good old tickle to be alerted each and every time that I post a new video. But without much further ado and without any more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. So we're going to start with an amazing update for the Ahsoka series because we now have a rumoured release date. Star Wars Newsnet and Bespin Bulletin have stated that Ahsoka will begin filming in March and Lucasfilm are aiming to release the series in spring of 2023. Now this is great news because we had no real idea of when to expect the series. With The Mandalorian Season 3 filming until next May, it was assumed that the Ahsoka series would only begin filming after then. But it seems as though production is going to get underway a couple of months early. Their information comes from Production Weekly, who stated that The Mandalorian spin-off is going to begin filming in just under four months time. Previously, as I reported in the past, the Hollywood Reporter gave a vague window of early 2022 when they revealed Hayden Christensen is going to star in the upcoming series. But now we have a definitive month, it's going to start filming in March. Now, on top of this, Production Weekly also shared some juicy details for the Andor series and the Acolyte. Even though we haven't got season one yet, season two of Andor is going to begin filming soon. Now, while they didn't provide a specific filming date for Andor season two, they did say that Lucasfilm are targeting a late summer to early autumn release in 2023. Now, what's odd about this is that the listing says Andor 3 rather than Andor 2. This is a bit eyebrow raising, but could be a typo. As we know from a recent update, Lucasfilm are planning for Andor to have three seasons, so for production on season two to take place next year is not too surprising. But given that season one hasn't even released yet, it does seem a little bit premature. Having said that, on the other hand, Andor is set to be an absolute banger of a series, and the creator of the show, Tony Gilroy, may have had an entire three-season arc planned right from the start, so they already know where season two is going and how it continues from season one. It might be a smoother transition than we realize, and that's why it's easy for them to go from production on season one right into production for season two. And bear in mind, guys, that season one of Andor was heavily delayed, both because of the pandemic and also so hurdles along the way. It's not too far-fetched to assume that writing for season two has been going on for a while because they did have a lot of time within those delays to pre-plan what was going to happen next. As for the Acolyte, my dear friends, Production Weekly have reinstated that it's going to begin filming in May. So what we know so far about 2023 Star Wars is that Ahsoka and or season two and the Acolyte are more or less confirmed. Rogue Squadron was going to fill that December slot, but as we know from recent news, it's been shelved. Or should I say, delayed indefinitely. But with Rogue Squadron being off the menu, Lucasfilm now have more flexibility of when everything is going to be released. So now, my dear friends, we're going to move on and talk about Dark Horse because they are back with Star Wars comics, and these are going to be released in 2022. They did an amazing job in the past, and old school Star Wars comic book fans will certainly remember some of those classics. Some of my all-time favorite Star Wars comics are from Dark Horse, notably George R. Binks, the tragic tale of Jar Jar Binks' father, which was written by one of my patrons, the amazing Tony Millionaire. Another one which I absolutely adore from the early 2000s is Yaddle, The One Below, and this was published by Dark Horse in issue five of Star Wars Tales. Well, now they're back and they're going to publish Star Wars comics from every point in the timeline from the High Republic onwards. So it's going to encompass the prequels, original trilogy, the New Republic era, which is when The Mandalorian takes place, They'll also cover the sequels and much more. So let's take a look at the official announcement from StarWars.com. Dark Horse Comics is heading back to a galaxy far, far away in 2022. The storied publisher, which has worked with Lucasfilm on a variety of titles from Dark Empire to the art of Star Wars Rebels, has announced a new line of all ages comics, expanding the Star Wars galaxy like never before. Beginning next spring, the spring of 2022 that is, experience adventures in every era, from the High Republic to the rise of the First Order, with new and exciting stories produced in collaboration with Lucasfilm and Disney Worldwide Publishing. Mike Richardson, the Dark Horse Comics founder and CEO, had this to say, the idea is to build up a Star Wars program that includes an ongoing series as well as an anthology. Mixed in would be one-shots and specials, we'll see where they go from there, 
Initially, we will focus on stories featuring the High Republic. But not to fret, my dear friends, if you're not a fan of the High Republic, because as I say, they will be releasing more comics that will span other points of the timeline. And so now, my dear friends, let's talk about some more exciting news. Star Wars Brotherhood, the upcoming novel, which takes place during the prequel era, has been given a cover. A lot of people have been criticizing it on social media, but in my opinion, it's perfect. It's not flashy, but really does justice to the kind of novels that were being released at the time. It looks straight out of 2002 and falls in line with the other prequels novels of the time. Star Wars Brotherhood by Mike Chen is arriving on May the 10th of 2022, and it's going to tell the tale of a reference that Obi-Wan makes in Revenge of the Sith. That business on Kato Nemoria doesn't, doesn't count. In the background of the cover, you can very clearly see the landscapes of Kato Nemoidia, which are going to be central to the book. If you're wondering about the specific point in the timeline, Brotherhood picks up after the events of Attack of the Clones, when the Clone Wars are raging across the galaxy, and Anakin and Padme secretly get married. Following an explosion that devastates Kato Nemoidia, the jewel of the Trade Federation, blame falls on the Republic. The Jedi Council sends Obi-Wan Kenobi to the planet, and in his investigation, he senses the presence of a Sarge Ventress. Meanwhile, Anakin Skywalker, newly risen to the rank of Jedi Knight, again disobeys a command. So it sounds like it's going to be a real treat for prequels fans and also fans of the Clone Wars because a Sarge Ventress herself is going to be involved. The author, Mike Chen himself, had this to say about Brotherhood. Brotherhood opens with both Anakin and Obi-Wan recently promoted to Jedi Knight and Jedi Council, yet feeling a bit uncertain about how to go about it. All while the war accelerates things so quickly that the Jedi charge into battle without a chance to really go. Why are we doing this? Who are these clones? For our two heroes, they're balancing their feelings on this while trying to live life without being tethered to one another, and the story examines how both of them realize that not only do they need each other, they're better Jedi when they're connected. So this book basically acts as a precursor to both the Clone Wars series and also Revenge of the Sith. I can't wait to read it. As you guys know, I'm a massive prequels fan, and as a result, I grew up reading some of the most incredible prequels novels. Not all of them were canon, but this one is. But what do you guys make of the cover and also the plot synopsis? Let me know your thoughts on this and everything we spoke about in the comments down below. But otherwise, my dear friends, that brings us to the end of this news update. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new and a massive welcome if you are. And if you're feeling generous and you want more videos that are not found here on YouTube, then why not consider becoming a patron? The link is down there in the description. But otherwise, I'm Star Wars Meg, may the force be with you and I'll see you tomorrow.